733. Okay. I am going to do a roll call to see if we've got a quorum. And John, are you here? I'm here. All right. Glenn? Yes, I'm here. All right. Uh, All right, who else we got there? Um, you got Josh? Right. And... Good crunchy, you got Kenneth here. Okay, all right. So we've got a quorum. I'm calling the meeting to order. And the first order of business is to review and act on the minutes from the last meeting that were emailed out to everyone. Are there any corrections or comments on those minutes? Having read, this is Glenn. All right, having hearing none, I'll entertain a motion uh, to accept the minutes as written. Um, this is Glenn and I make that I've got a motion. Do I have a second? This is Kenneth. I'll second the motion. Okay. I'm having a hard time understanding everything, but we're going to get through. Okay. Uh, then, in that case, I will turn the meeting over to Mr. Cook, the staff attorney, to lead us through the other items on the agenda. You will need a vote on the minutes. Say again. You will need to have a roll call vote on the minutes. Uh, you're right. You're right. Okay. All in favor of uh, the motion to approve the minutes say aye. Aye. Glenn, A Glenn Adams says aye. Aye. Joe. Opposed? Aye. Josh Hughes says aye. John Lee says aye. Okay. Then the minutes are approved, and we'll move on to the rest of the agenda, having turned it over to Mr. Cook. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to reflect that adequate public notice was given both to the home builders and to the public. I would also like the minutes reflect that each board member can hear each other. And I remind the board members that when they vote is by roll call vote, and the chairman will call the names of each member and each member will give their vote at that time. Without objection, we will hear Crescent Homes, Grease Premier Homes, Ryan Homes, and the Jones Company with the exception of Lot 29 Otter Creek. I ask at this time whether there are any representatives to the home builders on the line concerning the appeals before the board. Are there any home builder representatives? I'd like to reflect that there is no representatives from the home builders. The first argument the appellants make is that they have obtained vested rights under the Vested Rights Act of 2014, so the law that issue are not subject to the tax fee. The act provides that should the developer receive preliminary plat approval from the local authority, the development standards in place at that time shall remain the same. It's the appellate argument that the impact fee is a development standard or development regulation. However, the definition provided in the act provides that the definition of development standard includes local stormwater requirements, local construction standards for buildings, streets, alleys, curbs, sidewalks, and lot sites. It has the impact fee is none of these things. In fact, all these things are development regulations are actually deal with development of the property. And in fact, developers can actually develop the property without so ever having to pay the impact fee. I ask for that should they find that development regulations are present and they fix the best of property rights, that we maintain the applicants have provided no evidence that it received any prior approvals from the planning department or planning commission 
for the loss at issue prior to the adoption and implementation of the educational impact fee. The second argument the appellants make is that the impact fee is required to be calculated on each subdivision and the proceeds are required to be used on educational capital projects for that specific development. The private act provides that it is the intent of the act to grant the Williamson County Legislative Body the authority to set up as a procedure or system to collect the fees from a developer on any new residential development so as to require that developer to share in the burdens of growth by paying his pro rata share for the cost of public improvements generated by that new land development activity. The private act does not require the county to define specific zones. In fact, the act actually provides the county legislative broad power to implement an impact fee subject to constitutional limitations. To support the decision to adopt the countywide fee, the legislative body determined that a countywide impact fee is needed because of the ever-changing school district as well as the fact that development in one area of the county has an effect on schools in the other area. And for these reasons, Mr. Chairman, we ask that these appeals be denied. Okay, you've heard the staff attorney make the report and the recommendations. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion on the appeals. I'll second it, Glenn Adams. All right, I've got a motion to hear a second. Glenn Adams seconds the motion. Okay, I've got Mr. Adams making the motion. Do I have a second to the motion? This is Kenneth Choate. I'll second the motion that Glenn made to deny the appeal. Okay, I've got a proper motion and a second. If you vote for the motion, you're voting to deny the appeals. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Kenneth, state your names when you vote, please. Aye. This is Crutcher, and I say aye. Glenn Adams says aye. Kenneth Choate says aye. Josh Hughes says aye. John Lee says aye. Aye. The motion passes, which is to deny the appeals. Is there any other business to come before the board, Mr. Cook? Yes, sir. We've got one more lot to hear. Say again? We have one more lot. We have Jones Company, Lot 29, Otter Creek. Okay. Mr. Chairman, there was no explanation given for this appeal by the applicant supporting or explaining the basis for their appeal. Based on previous appeals submitted by this applicant, the county maintains that the impact fee is not a development regulation or development standard, and therefore the property owner did not obtain vested rights. Further, the county maintains that it adopted the educational impact fee in accordance with the authority granted under Chapter 120 of the 1987 Private Act. There is no requirement that the county create a new impact fee rate for each subdivision and the proceeds raised by the subdivision in a manner that 
that only benefits fits that particular subdivision. And for these reasons, and for the reasons that they have provided no basis for their argument, we ask for this appeal to be denied. Thank you, Mr. Questions or comments on the Mr. Cook's the staff position? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion on that appeal. Mr. Chairman, this is Kenneth Choate. I vote that we deny this appeal. Mr. Chairman, this is Josh Hughes. I will second that motion. The motion has been properly made and seconded to deny the appeal. We will have a roll call vote. If you vote for the appeal, for the motion, you'll be voting to turn down the appeal. Roll call vote. This is Crutcher. I vote yes. Glenn Adams votes yes. Kenneth Choate votes yes. Josh Hughes votes yes. John Lee votes yes. The motion passes and the appeal is denied. Is there any other business from you, Mr. Cook? No, sir. That's all the appeals we have today for you. Is there any other business from any member of the board? Mr. Chairman, this is Joe Horn. I just want to announce our next meeting will be 4-23-20, two weeks from the day at 7.30 a.m. We will see how we do it. We perhaps still could be doing it remote, and we'll try to work out any of the glitches we encountered this morning. Thank you very much. Okay. The business of the board is completed, and I declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Joe, I congratulate you for being able to pull this off. Thank you. Thank you.